Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Jason back at it again with another Geography Now video. Finally, the long and waited Geography Now, the legendary Spain episode is finally here. So what I know about Spain, uh, I speak Spanish, I am bilingual. Hola, mi nombre es Jason, you know me. But uh, I do know uh, a 50 50 on spanish culture i know that you know muslims they invaded the iberian peninsula spanish it's a romance language the, the war of spanish succession the spanish civil war everything 50 50 i think i don't know i don't really know like medieval and the past i do know it was like a roman a Roman providence like Hispania, but <clears throat> anyways, this video is 33 minutes long, so I don't know why I'm still talking because this is gonna be a long video. All right, guys, we will begin this video in three, two, one, go. All right, Spain, I don't really have to say much. You Hopefully, I come out this video Italy, it is one learning more in depth about Spain. Europe, Portugal, we love you, man. You're cool and awesome, but like, let's be real. You're kind of like the mini boss before the. Okay, I'll just stop right there. Anyway, over 500 Portugal's... million people across the world speak Spanish. And if you I love this, Portugal. This I don't know why. I, I love speaking Portuguese. From Spain. So it's not just language. Eu falo por um pouco português. Pouquito português. Welcome to the original kingpin of the Hispanic world. Spain. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Don't forget to get Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. So Spain, everything from the freezing right glaciers there. of Patagonia to the freezing glaciers of Alaska have at some point been imprinted upon by the notorious Spanish seal. And of course, it's always great to have people from the country in the yeah, country episodes. Colonial, that. Yeah. Here's Jose and Anna. Say hi to them. Hello everyone. Hi. Oh, we are Catalonian. Hi, I'm from Valencia. Valencia. I'm Jose and I'm from Catalonia, from a town called Blanes. Uh oh, Valencia, Catalonia. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Now, Cala Paella. Catalonia. <laughs> that All one's right, probably so gonna be we, the uh, messiest. No. 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 Uh, well, I'll make it up to you guys with some cervezas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Si, I got it. I feel like in Spanish, <laughs> in Spain, yeah, I feel like here, they pronounce or like s with the. Uh, this is so interesting. I, something this like that. I know they awesome. use more like, like the, bro, like, I don't know. I learned in Spanish class oh, well. Now we've covered earlier this a lot year. of countries that have loose forms of administrative the position semester. within their political regions. But with Spain, I kind of see it like a teacher with a really rowdy classroom. It's like, hey, you kids, you stop that. Galicia, hey, hey, you stop talking to Portugal. <laughs> Basque and Navarre, I don't know what you're talking about. Rioja, you stop drinking wine. Extra Maduro, do you even exist? Valencia, hey, you stop burning everything right now. How Catalonia's trying to jump out the window. What? Oh, dear, you little. Uh, no, but for real, the people in Spain <laughs> just know who they are and they own it. And with that, let's go to the animation. All right, Spain is located in Western Europe, taking up about 82% of the Iberian Peninsula, shared with Portugal to the west, the Bay of Biscay to the north, and to the south, subsections of the Mediterranean, known as the Balearic and Alberon Seas, and inland, the Pyrenees Mountains separate them from France and Andorra. Keep in mind, they even have this small little exclave in France called Yibia, cut off by about 1.6 kilometers of space to the Spanish border on the N-154 highway. Up north on the Bidasoa River, Spain also shares an island with France called Isla de los Faisanes, or Pheasant Island, in which the sovereignty switches every six months. Those aren't the only countries that border them, though. In France, the southeast France. by La Linea de Gibraltar, la Concepcion, you find this peninsula, Gibraltar, which is actually an overseas territory of the UK that they have had since 1713 with the Treaty of Utrecht. In addition, Spain Spanish also has section, the Plaza de yari, yari, yari. Yari, or strongholds of sovereignty. Sovereignty, historical places in northern Africa that date well, back I don't to know why, but I'm Spain so excited for like AP Euro. They include the two I know it's like advanced placement and, Medea, and which are I'm gonna be screwed to over because I've never in taken an honors I haven't taken an honors class yet. Known as Peñon de Vélez Bro, de la Gomera. Peninsula like is divided by a 100 meter I'm wide I'm kind of excited. As much as, it one of the shortest international as, much as I'm probably gonna world. get screwed there, over. Spain also has two main archipelagos, the Canary Islands off the coast of Morocco, and again, of course, the Americ Islands in the Mediterranean. Due to the positioning of the Canary Islands, this gives Spain two time zones.
zones, UTC 0 and plus 1. With that, Spain breaks down a little interesting. The country is classified as a decentralized unitary state in which although sovereignty is vested in one nation, the regional institutions hold their own high degree of self-governance and have their own parliament and presidents. These 17 entities are called autonomous communities or autonomies in short. Ceuta and Melilla are categorized as autonomous cities and have the right to become communities, but so far have not expressed interest in doing so. The capital and most populous city and highest capital in Europe Madrid. is Madrid in the center of the country. Like literally Madrid. it is. There's even a floor plaque called the Puerta del Sol, which serves as kilometer zero for all the roads and train networks that radiate outwards from the central hub. And of course, Madrid holds the biggest and busiest airport, Adolfo Suarez Madrid Barajas International. From there, the second largest city is Barcelona on the Mediterranean coast, where the second busiest airport can be found, Barcelona El Prat International. From there, the busiest shipping port is the port of Argeciras Bay, where over 100 million tons of cargo pass annually. Finally, fun fact, some parts of Spain are actually antipodes of New Zealand, which means they are literally located exactly across the entire planet from each other. So, oh. sometimes Canary Island are not named after canaries, but rather dogs because of the Latin can. Which means dog. What means dog? Like canine. Huh. That was marginally interesting. Now, we're not going to dive too much into it because it would take forever. I feel like if you learn Latin, so many that's like a gateway to well, like learning France, a few major French, they unified. and like and this is the romance languages. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are more in sync with Madrid's centralized power. And speaking of which it's fourth, Spain is a monarchy. Yes, one of the 12 monarchies of Europe. Basically, most people will say it all started when Isabella de Castile married Ferdinand of Aragon, unifying the two biggest powerhouses of the Iberian Peninsula. Even though they kind of pissed off the Pope because they were second cousins and did not dispensate their marriage, which did he just say a no no word? Come on, Pope. Come on, Pope. Barbs. He dispensated their marriage. So, anyway, the point is after millennia of going through the Phoenicians, Romans, the Suevi, whatever those guys were, Vandals and Alans, the Visigoths, the Moors, and Umayyads, modernish Spain started yeah, to take reconquista. Shape in the 1400s with a Reconquista or Reconquering. And from there, the story gets crazier. How so? You sure you're not bored with all this history stuff? Normally I would be, but nah, pictures bro. in the past <laughs> I need this. I need this. Thank you for revealing my script writing structure, but anyway, fine, if you insist. After the Reconquista, the sexy Habsburgs slipped into the royal family because that's what they did throughout everybody in Europe. And when their right. line ended, the House of Bourbon, a French dynasty slipped in. And here we are today with Philippe VI. I wonder who's still Leonor, the Habsburg king. king. Spain I'm pretty sure it's like They none. are literally the second most visited country on earth after France, with more than 83 million people recorded as of 2019. It's important to know that Spain has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage sites at 48. The Autonomy of Andalusia has the most at 7. Now we all know some of the obvious UNESCO sites like the Alhambra, the Great Mosque of Córdoba, the Guggenheim, the Sagrada Familia Church. Which has been under construction for like 130 years. It would take way too long to cover all the UNESCO sites. Bro, that's like, a list of some I don't know why, but that, that's a hot spot for me. I want to go Royal there. Royal Palace in Madrid. Centenil de las Bodegas. Valencia's Arts and Science District. Theme parks like Puerto Ventura and Parque Warner and Texas Hollywood. The Canary Islands have pyramids, mummies, and the Neptune statue. The wooden mass room thing in Seville, Metropole Parasol. Madrid claims to have the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world. Cadiz is the oldest city. And fake Germany, Mallorca, and fake UK, Ibiza. And so on. Yeah, that list doesn't even uh, give Spain justice because it's not even Germany, a small fraction fake of the UK. Big picture. One part of that picture, though, is the landscape and resources. Which brings us to... <laughs> So since Spain has territories in There's Africa, the ocean, and Europe, it's transcontinental, so we have like many different landscapes. Like we even have a restaurant that cooks food over an active volcano. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, let's go <laughs> through the animation. First of all, for the continental part, the country is incredibly mountainous. In fact, the second most mountainous country in Europe. Yeah, ever The country has six main ranges, the Betic chain in the south, the central and Iberian chains in the center, the Cantabrian and Leon chains in the north, and the Pyrenees in the northwest with the border. <laughs> France and Andorra. In the center, you have the Meseta Central Plateau, a wide highland that stretches wide across the interior. As you can clearly see from space, the northern part of Spain has the most lush green wet zones, and as you head south, the country obviously gets more dry and arid. In fact, Spain has the only true desert of mainland Europe, the Tabernas Desert, located in Andalusia, which holds the highest temperatures of mainland Europe at over 40 degrees Celsius in the summer. These mountains are essentially a byproduct of Spain being located right at the confluence of the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, creating a 
slew of minor rifts it's and like fault the Sahara. lines. This means the southern part of Spain may occasionally experience earthquakes above six on the Richter scale, and certain areas mostly along the Mediterranean oh. have extinct volcanoes. Great. The most active volcanic area of the country, though, would actually be the Canary Islands, which lie on an interplate volcanic region on the African plate. Geologists mostly agree that the bro, islands are the plates moving over They're like a the Hawaii to Spain, bro. bubbled up out of Why the ocean, so far much away. like how the Hawaiian Islands were formed. Speaking of islands, the highest point of the country isn't even on the Iberian Peninsula, but rather the Canary Islands, part of the larger subregion known as Macaronesia, with Mount Teide, which is actually the third highest volcano in the world from its base. Back to the mainland, though, the highest mountain on continental Spain would be Mulasen, at nearly 3,500 meters high. From there, the longest river, shared with Portugal, is the Tagus, or Tejo. However, the longest river entirely in Spain is the Ebro. Now, most of the inland bodies of water are reservoirs blocked up by dams on rivers. However, the largest natural freshwater lake would be Lake Sanabria in the northwest. Finally, Spain has three main climate zones on the continental part. The areas in the south have a warm, dry Mediterranean climate. The central Meseta Plateau has hot summers and cold winters. And the north Cantabrian mountains have a maritime climate with the most rain year-round and snowfall in the winter. So an extra side note, after Malta, Spain is the sunniest country in Europe. Like 260 days yeah. a year. If only the UK yeah, could hot. be that. <laughs> now with all these rugged lands, Spain hosts a wide range of flora and fauna, differing by region. For example, the Canary Islands, you have the black sand beaches and the ancient tropical Lora Silva. It's only found in Macaronesia. Otherwise, on the peninsula, you have Sounds like the Canary Islands, from to be honest. Hills that look like Scotland in the north to the shrubby rocky Arizona-like deserts of the south. Within these wide-ranged zones, you have tons of natural treasures like caves, canyons, and even a river that flows orange and red. Agriculture-wise, they are the second largest producer of wine after Italy and the largest producer of olive oil in the world. On oh, fun side note, when they cook, only about 40% of Spanish homes have direct gas lines installed, and the rest usually have gas tanks delivered, right? Your yeah, yeah. bombona. Now we all know mm. that despite having the 13th largest nominal GDP in the world, Spain has had quite a reputation for its rather, how can I put this? Recessive tendencies? <laughs> yes, during the financial crisis, Spain was hit hard for about six years during 2008, and in 2014, they reached a height at about 27.2% unemployment. There are a lot of factors that went into this, but it kind of went... How can we grow our economy? Well, we need to build a lot of stuff. Okay, what's the problem? The banks. What if we just let the banks report what they wanted and not regulate them as much? That's a great idea. Nothing could go wrong. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> And it did. Perfect storm. And due to this lack of accountability, experts speculate that somewhere upwards to one-fifth of the total GDP is somehow tied in with the undisclosed transaction industry. <laughs> Second only <laughs> to Italy. Faces. No proud of that. You guys probably have a lot to say about that. No surprise, Spain. <coughs> Galicia. Is known for being the main port of entry for the European cocaine trade. A fun little fact. Did you guys mm -hmm. know that over 90% of euros that are transacted in Spain have trace amounts of cocaine on them? <laughs> <laughs> over 90%, yes. There was a study in Valencia no, Science. No. Anyway, off of that. Spain is the fifth largest producer of wind energy in the world. Wind we even have turbines. the world's largest renewable energy operator, Iberdrola. We are the eighth largest automobile producer in the world and second largest manufacturer in Europe after Germany. We even have some of the domestic brands like Seat. Which is actually a subsidiary of Volkswagen, but let them have that one. And the incredible I've never heard of that. the produce an expensive GTA Spano. What else is rare GTA. in this country? So many animal species. And with that, did you just Harry say Harry GTA? Right, Scary Hollow here. In Europe, Spain and Italy usually rank in the top two regarding biodiversity. I mean, they've got tropical forests, I mean, desert, so there's lots of wildlife real estate. Uh, there the is, like, I'm pretty sure in Argentina, parks, like, there's, like, a bit of Italian Nevada, influence in, like, and, Portugal, like, the language the same type and, like, the culture. Iberian I'm pretty sure, like like correct me if I'm wrong. I However, apologize they're known for if the I Spanish am Big Five. The Bearded Vulture, the Iberian Lynx, the Iberian Wolf, the Imperial Eagle, and the Eurasian Brown Bear. The national animal, however, is a bull. And some might say the Hispanic Lion. Some historians claim that they might have inhabited Southern Europe. It's in dispute. Lots of mm. reptiles are endemic too, especially on the island regions. The Canary Islands have about five native species of gecko. 
That was a very good Geico. impression of a gecko. Otherwise, as a country that's in the path of migratory really birds Geico. from Africa to southern Europe, there's over 630 bird species. Bro, there's Speaking flamingos. I've got a where are the here, where are the flamingos? Tell me where That's the scary. flamingos are. Now we're about to talk about the food of Spain, but before we do, you have to understand yeah, there's la a comida. Few What is food culture in Spain to you guys? What does that mean? What does it entail? Every meal kind of blends into the one. following meal. Next one. There's like a whole system, right? Mm -hmm. It starts with breakfast, maybe some churros and chocolate, and then uh, what? Have no, un aperitivo. Churros. And then you have lunch, and lunch normally ends up with what we call sobremesa, that is like just talk. But you stay at the table. And you stay at the table. You don't have to go out of the, of the bar or even if you're in a house. And then merienda, which is a little snack we have in the afternoon before dinner. Okay. So that's why we have dinner at 10 p.m. It just keeps going. Never, Never stop. stop. Never stop. We eat and, and then, then eat again and then maybe go, you know, dancing or something. But <laughs> while you're dancing, you also eat. You gotta do flamenco <laughs> with some... Probably. Fun fact, Spain is one of the countries in the world that has more bars per citizen. And you can even get beer in McDonald's, right? Yes. Yeah. True. Yeah, that was so impact when I came here. <laughs> anyway, and with that, here's uh, some... I feel like I've seen like a McDonald's video of that. Noah. Boom. Prior to the 15th century, Europeans had no idea that things like chocolate, he looks corn, so tomatoes, different, bro. potatoes, avocados, and sugar even existed. Through the Spanish trade routes, the rest of the world introduced these items. Like and now you can have things like pizza and fries. Great items. Pizza, In any case, pizza. every region of Spain has a different style of cuisine, and the gastronomy is top-notch, world-renowned. We don't have time to explain them all, but some dishes you guys, Spanish geography peeps, said that every Spaniard will most likely have access to include things like gazpacho, terethnos, churros, coquetas, Bachato, cochinillo, arroz a la zamorana, or naco, <laughs> amon, fideuá, cocido, and tortilla. This is not the Spanish, same as I'll give it a, like, in Latin America. A six. This is a potato and egg dish. And probably the most world-renowned dish, paella, originated in Valencia. And they are strict with the way that it is made. They hate it when this happens. Hey, can I have some of that paella? I've heard so much about it. Yeah, sure. It comes with extra mussels and shrimp, because that's paella. Mm, it does? Shrimp. Yeah. Okay. Sure, whatever, just take it. <laughs> the true way to make it is either with rabbit or chicken. Otherwise, Valencians will call all the imposters arroz con cosas, or rice with things. Well, that's all I got for you today. Until cosas. next time. Don't eat a paella in Madrid or Barcelona, but to eat the real one, go to Valencia. And probably after this, many people is going to want to kill me. <laughs> I did that myself. Fun fact, uh, Sherry was also invented here, as was the Molotov cocktail, which played a huge role in the Spanish Civil War. Well, let's talk about the Spanish people now, shall we? Oh, I thought he was going to go like, let's talk about the Civil War. Now, as I and he was going to go on like a, a five-minute speed Spain, run about it. They all kind of have their own thing going on. In a way, we have this kind of quiet acknowledgement that unity doesn't mean uniformity what do you guys think like do you guys generally get along uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is but the yes. silence yes, and just there's like, like these uh, stereotypes hmm. things that oh he probably is this way because he's from this place or mm. he's probably you know i'll say when i've met Spanish people outside of Spain. We all love Spain and love everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's just when we're in Spain, we love to, you know, talk to each other. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, with that, let's talk about the people of Spain in the graph. First of all, Spain has about 48 awards. million people and is the fifth most populous country in Europe and has the highest life expectancy in the OECD countries. The country is made up predominantly by people that identify as native Spaniard at about 88%. Keep in mind, this label is very broad and pretty much pertains to a wide mm. range of people with different physical traits, but mostly with a South European Mediterranean background in their racial makeup. Geneticists also have determined that the average Spaniard, especially in the South, has around 5% North African ancestry due to the Moorish conquests that yeah. took over the country for seven centuries. I need centuries. to remember the that. I'm pretty the sure like the Spanish wars that have settled of like centuries. the largest ones being Latin Arabic Americans at about 5%. Influence, like North Africans and Eastern that. Europeans like at that's about 2% each. I don't know and the then remaining 3% from other places around the world like, like video Asia on and it. whatever. All right, so the official but language of Spain is I'm pretty sure you're never going to look at Spanish, but specifically lazy. Castilian or Castellano Spanish. Yeah, of course we have a uh, Spain Spanish dialect, which sounds a bit different. Okay, so Latin they do American have Spanish. a TH now, for mind, Most Latin American you. Spanish is heavily influenced by the Andalusian dialect of Spanish, as many people from those areas moved and migrated to the Americas. Long story short, what's the easiest way to piss off a Spaniard? Vale, voy a empezar mi nuevo proyecto en mi nuevo ordenador. Elige el idioma. Es computadora, bro. Alguien me puede explicar 
por qué está español con la bandera mexicana? ¿Alguien podría explicarme por qué? Porque el español de Europa es el español que I like that. That was truly anyway, remarkable. That, despite Spanish being the national language, they have three other regionally co-official languages that are allowed to be publicly used and Basque. published alongside Basque Spanish. Be so one we have then. Catalan, Galician, Basque. Yeah. Basque is a language, <clears throat> Let's go, like, bro. Let's go, Basque. No one knows where it comes from and doesn't have anything to do with Latin or any other language. There's also other minority Romance languages like Asturianese and Aragonese, but very few people speak them and they don't really pursue to officiate them. And there's other offshoot languages like Ladino, spoken by the Sephardic Jewish community. The coolest language fact though is that on the island of Gomera in the Canary Islands, they use Silbo Gomero, which is taught in schools. It's a language completely composed of whistles. Here's a clip if you want to hear some. You didn't even know mm. that. Yeah, oh, we're all learning. Yeah, we could talk about language stuff in Spain all for hours. It's crazy, but we got to move on. Historically, no. the Catholic faith played a huge role I don't care the video is like two hours long. I want to stay here. the fact that today only about two-thirds of the country, to some degree, might say that they are very less nominally identified as Catholic. And the less of the 20% of the population goes to church. But for what it's worth, we have the Camino de Santiago, one of the largest Catholic pilgrimages in the world. The interesting thing, though, is that there is noticeable traces of Maurice Arabic influence as well. Everything from architecture and even the names of cities, for example, if they start with Al. It's even how Andalusia got its name from the Arabic Al Andalus. And today, there's even noticeable words borrowed from Arabic in the Spanish language, like Takta or Atucar. Right. <laughs> now, in regards to Spain, so there are okay, uh, okay, I like point, this. We had 35 colonies across the world, and today and I there lost are 19 them in like sovereign Spanish Napoleon. countries plus Puerto Rico that all have a story rooted from Spain. Yeah, you guys have a long history of Latin America. What do they think of what do they think of Spanish people? They love Europe in general, it's like oh, Europe, so I don't know, but at the same time, they have some other thoughts about that, like we are lazy. <laughs> a lot of people, especially in South America, that think of us as very structured or like what Spanish people think of Germans almost. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Which is and really exactly. weird for us. So they kind of think you guys are like the Germans of the Hispanic world. Yeah. Yeah. But then in Europe, we are like. Bankrupt. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> Generalizing, though. Not everyone Generalizing. That, but. but in regards to Spain's, you know, impact on the world, yes, we've heard the stories. Colonialism was riddled in lots of tragedy. Many wars and battles were fought. Many died. Diseases were spread. No denying these terrible historical yeah, yeah, incidents. Small but box. And this might be one of the most hard pills Atlantic to swallow, controversial things I'll ever say in this so. show, given the current social climate that we live in. But you have to kind of see colonialism in all vantage points throughout its manifestation. In a weird way, many of the things that you hold dear today and the people that you you admire and the ideas that change the world may have never come about without ties to colonialism too. It's a weird paradox of chronological exchanges throughout history. I mean, for example, the wheel and beast of burden, like horses and cattle, were brought over to the Americas. Remember in the Peru episode, we explained how the only domesticated animal that could remotely help carry cargo was the llama and it could only carry like 80 pounds. <laughs> Otherwise, people just kind of walked to get around. See, like that. History kind of has a weird way of showing you that nothing yeah, ever is Yeah, European Renaissance, is, Age of Discovery. Something you probably never Discovery saw Discovery of yes, art everyone likes and to land. Past tragedies, but you also have to acknowledge that it's possible for a rose to grow from concrete. Like the invention of the first artificial heart in Argentina to, I don't know, Vicente Fernandez and Shakira. That's my little <laughs> brief postulation on the topic. Take it as you will. I'm just saying, see before you decree. That was intense. Yeah. yeah. I like, yeah, there's like barbs just it. went yeah, off. It's hard to judge that era with today's standards and that gets really tricky. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for years and I know what's coming. The Spanish people and our backstory have so many diverse layers and luckily we made a video explaining all about those various groups and nationalities of Spain so just check it out right here he, he just had to make a video because he didn't want to make a full depth in this video or else the video would be like an hour no, 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 no. yeah we're at Madrid we're gonna be talking about Barcelona too I love it. La but that's Liga. besides the point. All right, sports in Spain. So without saying much, most of you will automatically default to football. Yes, we all know that oh, yeah, soccer is right. practically a religion in Spain. Their national team has qualified for the FIFA Cup 15 times, hosted in 1982 and won against the Netherlands in 2010. And of course, everybody knows about the huge rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid.
Madrid. Which team are you on? But soccer isn't everything for Spain. Wait. Fun fact. I'm surprised it didn't say El Clasico. Hockey team scored 16 gold medals. Everybody knows Rafael Nadal's Wimbledon championship in 2008 and 2010. Their national basketball team has won one world and two Euro basket championships. Aside from all the contemporary sports, Spain also has a rich culture of domestically produced sports. Everything from patanque to Canarian style wrestling. I could fight a canary. I bet you I could beat it. I don't know, man. Those things are fast. The Basque country, though, has the most native sports out of anywhere else in Spain. You have things like Jaya Lai, stone lifting, hole drilling, wood chopping. That's my sport right there. It's wood chopping. Jale, fact, Jale Lai. Is, is that like happen. it's not really a sport? A, a it's cricket spinoff. They love it. And there's been 15 recorded deaths, but they still love it. And finally, I know you were thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Spanish bullfighting or corrida de toro. The sport dates all the way back to Roman times. Bullfighting is kind of seen as a performance art mixed with a sport. The matador attempts to subdue, immobilize, or kill the bull in the arena. The Arabs, the Catholics, the frickin' Bourbons, they all tried to ban it, but it kept coming back. In recent years, the sport has yet again been met with a lot of backlash. In fact, it was completely banned in Catalonia in 2010. Well, I'm Bruh, gonna get out of here. Catalonia, you know come on. I'm proud of this trophy. I like Thank this you, sport. Art. Yeah, people in Spain are pretty active. It's actually uh, kind of funny considering that you guys have that whole siesta culture thing and you guys are known for being lazy. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, come, come on. on. But I love it. I haven't, I haven't taken a siesta in two years. Yeah, but that's because yeah. you live here. Here. No, but we're, I really, <laughs> we are not lazy, guys, okay? Also, siesta doesn't make you lazy. It recharges you. doesn't recharge you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up worse than you went to sleep. Wow, that's only in Valencia. Meanwhile. That's only in Valencia. <laughs> Speaking of stereotypes, what about the whole I mean, like, nudity thing? I thought that that was something... Valencia uh, oh, and La Liga, oh, they're No contrast. one pays attention to that. Like, it's not yeah. anything weird, but we don't go naked through the street. Like, right, right. So, in conclusion, <laughs> stereotypes debunked. Nudity is not legal in Spain, but it's okay in some beaches. All right, enough culture talk. Now we gotta move on to Hannah. That's her segment. So now here's Hannah with culture stuff. Random Hannah. Hi guys, it is good to be back. And remember that you can get a random Hannah t-shirt at geographynow.com. It has my face. Face. It has my face on it, and it's better than cute. Face. Ernest Hemingway once said, There is no nightlife in Spain. They stay up late, and they get up late. That is not nightlife. That is the life I mean, of day. Interestingly enough, it's kind of true for me, bro. I world. sleep late. I mean, it's like 1 o'clock, and I'm still recording, and I have school tomorrow. And literature. So many people like these have made internationally famous pieces of literature. None more famous than Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote. In addition, so many world world-renowned artists have come from Spain, including the Spanish Trinity, Pablo Picasso, Diego Velazquez, and Francisco Goya. He had some really dark work. Looks like he went to uh, death in the Spanish Inquisition. That's the Napoleonic but of Peninsula course, War. Not forget Anthony architecture and surrealist Salvador Dali, literally buried in his own museum. Literally my favorite artist of all time. Wait, Spain is a hub of many he's inventions. like his body. The fake His body better not be there or else I'm not going there. The wheelchair, I ain't trying to like the discovery of the have Tungsten, a soul now, right next quickly, to me. Let's talk about some cinema stuff. Explore the political climate with movies like Pan's Labyrinth, which is actually a Mexican movie, but does explore some aspects of Spanish culture and the Spanish Civil War. Take a tour of the beautiful Basque country by watching the movie Ocho Apaidos Vascos. I hope I'm saying that right. Is that right? Good enough. If you want to take a trip back to the Middle Ages and explore Spain's royalty culture, you can watch Juana la Loca. And everybody knows the famous actresses that came out of Spain, like Antonio Banderas, Penelope Cruz, Javier Bardem. Anyway, you get the point. There is is way too much film history to get into right now but if you want to learn more watch filmography now guys the filmography now, geography now. And finally, Spain is the land of festivals. Literally, every day you can find something happening in some part of Spain. You've probably heard of La Tomatina, La Farilla, La Tomatilla. And one like thing Chuck Tomatoes at you. Is music. Unfortunately, Keith has made his way back from Florida to Los Angeles. I don't know what to do with myself. I thought he was gone forever and he's freaking back. He's here to do the music segment. You guys kind of like him. So here I don't see a problem with Keith, but Keith is like the man of the hour all the time. I'm back. I'm back in the studio. My segment kicks 
Not her sex. <laughs> By the way, everybody, over the years, I've worn Rush shirts many times. Everybody knows Rush is my favorite band. Blah, 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 blah. Rush, don't sue, whatever. Anyways, so fun fact, and since I have such a love affair with guitars and things with strings, especially G strings, haha, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> The modern classical guitar was actually invented in Spain. This is actually a steel string. Spain is one of the very few countries that actually has no words in their national anthem. Each region of Spain actually has okay, its I own traditional style that. of music. The most well-known style of music that everybody around the world yeah probably knows is flamenco music predominantly founded in the southern region of spain and oh, wow. mostly the city of we Sevilla. talked about Highly that in ninth grade geography Papa class Lucia, who's a phenomenal last term guitar player that I would is have so to cool guys flamenco music as wow a finger style i didn't even on know guitar. that so for example said acoustic guitar if you take these two or sorry these three fingers and you anchor your two. thumb you kind of do this motion i mean here. it is also, two like, so you use your right hand as a kind of more percussive. In addition, most regions in Spain actually have their own style of dance, which is called the Jota. The rhythms oh. in the dance. I watched this said Jota. I was going to be like Diego. One, two, three, Diego Jota. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's basically the same thing. It feels faster, but it's not actually faster. Eventually, after the fall of the dictatorship, you had a bunch of amazing musicians come out, such as Rocio Jorado, La Pantoja, Joaquin Sabina, Rosalia, she's won like a bunch of Grammys. Say I don't know. It's just like whenever I watch some, like, Latin soap opera or something, and Rest I in peace, the Pantoja. chick in the big dress, and he cheated on me, <laughs> and I'm just all like, whoa. So that's it for me, you guys. I would just like to say thanks to Paul Barbato for flying me out to here to LA. So glad to have you back here. Oh my God, it's woo! great to be back. Woo! I miss yeah. being out in all of the glorious fast food that. <laughs> and then how? Thank you, Keith. Why All right, with that, it's time to move on to the friend zone, shall we? All right, so Jose, Anna, how do you feel about the way how Spain interacts with the rest of the world? Because of the language. I feel like with Portugal, feel like we might it's like feel closer to brothers. The they file up, the but People they like that we each other a lot. English. And okay, I probably have shown in this video that I'm not that good at English. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just no, had a long great. day, okay? You're doing great, you're okay? doing great. It's harder for us because we are come from a Latin language. Yeah. Yeah. So a German person is going to be able to understand and learn faster English than yes. us. So obviously Spain has a huge impact Just like on Portuguese. So first off, of course, in Africa it's interesting. The area of Western Sahara used to be a Spanish colony, which is now de facto run by Morocco, but with a dispute with the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Although Spain has never formally recognized the SADR, Spain does host a noticeable community of Sahrawi people on the Canary Islands, and on top of that, the whole Ceuta and Melilla thing kind of irks Morocco just a bit, to say the least. Nonetheless, they try to keep things cordial, and every new prime minister usually makes a trip to Morocco for their first diplomatic mission abroad. Otherwise, they have very close relations with their former colonies, the closest probably being Argentina, as they have the largest diaspora of Spaniards outside of Spain with almost half a million. And it's well known throughout the Latin world that Argentina probably has the biggest crush on Spain, so the more they get time with them, the better. Cuba and Venezuela mm. are high up on the list too, Cuba being the last American colony so, uh, to gain Italy, independence, Italy and they've always in. been fond of Spain's values. Venezuela specifically has very close ties to the Canary Islands, they even speak almost with the exact same accent, and half of everybody on the islands have friends or family in Venezuela. Back to Europe though, Andorra is like the Beverly Hills where the Spaniards move when they hit it big and want to hide their money. However, if we're going to get really personal, Portugal is like the little brother they have shared every moment of their history with. And they love to see him try. Like whenever Portugal try. accomplishes anything, Spain is their number one cheerleader. Like Spain knows they are four times bigger and have a way heavier socioeconomic impact I swear, on Europe and the world. They so got of course, like let beef. adorable Portugal have a Ronaldo or Magellan. They deserve some spotlight. Spain can't have it all. When it comes to their best friends, however, literally I would almost say every single Vasco Spaniard I have talked Cama, to has said the same country, you know. Italy. It's no shocker. When a Spaniard and Italian meet, there is an instant connection. They yeah, just like, share the same wasn't style, like Latin vibe part of like southern to the Roman Empire. They southern can learn each other's Italy, languages. They part approve of, Spain, of the other's food and music. They both laugh at stories of crazy dictatorships and underground mafia drama over a glass of wine. In the end, evidently, Spain and Italy are the kings and queens of South Europe. All right, and in conclusion, I think you guys should take it away. I'm out. <laughs> We are welcoming, and um, the cool thing about Spain is like you have many different cultures within the same country, so you can live completely different experiences. We like to party. 
that I'm not gonna say no. What's wrong with that? We love that because we are social mm. people. I yeah. think that's something. That okay, Brazil. A lot of those things years. I took for granted being in Spain, the Bra real diversity, yeah. I'm sorry, that's your, some you know, welcoming nature. Cheesy. And once I moved out, which more than 10 years ago, that's when I really started realizing yeah. how lucky we are to be from Spain. Yeah, have some real paella. And <laughs> real paella. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being in this episode. And with that, stay tuned. Sri Lanka is coming up next. Whoa, Sri Lanka. I don't know about you, but I am excited for Sri Lanka. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, like and subscribe. Anyways, guys, see you guys next time.